Hey, what's up, Good Life? Thanks for joining me for today's 128 moment. Yesterday was the 41st anniversary of one of the most epic moments in sports history. In 1980, the U.S. was hosting the Winter Olympics in a town called Lake Placid, New York. And these were the same Olympics that would see the great Eric Hyden win five speed skating gold medals, but that's not the most enduring memory from those Olympics. In the semifinal of the ice hockey tournament, Team USA was going up against this unstoppable force that was the team from the Soviet Union. And the Soviets fielded the most talented team in the world. And that statement includes, according to the experts, every professional team at the time as well. They were a well-oiled machine and every expert assumed they would quite literally skate through their competition to win their fifth straight gold medal. But on that night in Lake Placid, Herb Brooks, this very mild-mannered and hard-nosed American coach, he, he got in front of his team before the game started and he delivered a simple, simple message. He said, you are born to be a player. You are meant to be here. This moment is yours. You're meant to be here at this time. Let's have poise and let's have possession of the puck. Let's go, guys. Then he sent his team out to play. But this team was not filled with skilled veterans. It was not filled with grown men. These were mostly college kids and, so, and a few minor league players who were hoping, just hoping for a brighter future. And no one gave them a shot against the mighty Russians. But as the game wore on, their belief grew. Three times the Americans fell behind the Soviets and every time they came right back. Halfway through the final period, the Americans were down three to two and they scored back to back goals from two guys named Mark Johnson and Mike Ruzioni. And those goals were just 81 seconds apart. Then, so the American crowd that was filling the arena, they were going crazy but there were still 10 minutes to play. And in hockey, that's an eternity. But the American side, every time the Soviets came down the ice, they stifled their attack. And as the final seconds clicked off the clock, the chants of USA were roaring through the arena and the ageless Al Michaels, who's still calling games to this day, he delivered that timeless call. Do you believe in miracles? The Americans still had to come back later that week and beat Finland in the finals to win the gold medal, but everybody remembers the epic semifinal game that came to be known as the Miracle on Ice. And if you love sports, if you love stories, if you love underdogs, you love that miracle moment. And talking about it, even 41 years later, still gives me chills. So why am I talking about a hockey game in our 128 moment today? Well, let me ask you the exact same question that Al Michaels asked his audience. Do you believe in miracles? Do you believe God can and does do things that defy explanation? I'd be willing to bet that most of you watching this do believe that God can and does do miracles. And we believe that in part, at least in part, because Jesus said it. In multiple locations in the New Testament, specifically in Matthew 19, in Mark 10, and Luke 18, Jesus said something like this, nothing is impossible with God, or all things are possible with God. So in many circumstances, we believe in miracles. We, we hope for miracles. We even pray for miracles. But when do we pray for miracles? It's usually when we've reached the end of our rope, when the job is lost and we don't know how we're going to pay the bills, when the relationship is falling apart and we don't know where to turn, when the test results aren't good and the look on the doctor's face says a miracle might be our only hope. We know how to pray for miracles in those circumstances. And I believe we should pray for those miracles in those circumstances because I've seen God answer them. I've, I've seen families find the anonymous envelope in the mailbox with the exact amount of money that they need to make ends meet. I've seen the marriage that was on life support not only be spared from divorce, but restored to being healthy and loving and God-honoring and gospel-centered. I've seen the doctors dumbfounded when the tumor that was clearly there in the scans has disappeared by the Day of surgery. So I believe in miracles and I believe we should pray for miracles and we should always pray with full expectation, but devoid of any entitlement, like God owes us something. But before, I leave, before we leave this topic with maybe a sense of false hope, I also need to add that I've seen every single one of those circumstances end in ways where it seemed, at least in the moment, that the miracle never came. So what did Jesus mean when he said, nothing is impossible with God? Well, in all three of those passages, Jesus wasn't talking about healing or provision or restoration. He was talking about salvation. 
Jesus was saying that the greatest miracle is that a holy God made a way to save sinful men. And I believe the impossible miracle, I believe that's the impossible miracle that Jesus is pointing to. It's that no one has gone so far from God that his grace doesn't go further still. So to every one of you who have someone that you love who is very far from God, their past is just packed full of sin and their head and their heart are so hard that they really seem to be beyond God's grace. And there was a time when you prayed for their salvation, you maybe even shared the good news and and every time it seemed to go nowhere. To you, to you I say, please believe in miracles because nothing is impossible with God. Hope for a miracle in your loved one's life. Pray for God to soften their heart and to call them to salvation. And pray that God will grow your faith to believe that the impossible is possible. And pray that God will open your eyes to opportunities to be a part of that miracle by loving enough to share the good news. Even and especially if it feels like it will take a miracle to save that person. Good life, do you believe in miracles? Will you pray for somebody in your life today who's far from God that desperately needs to be saved? But will you believe that nothing is impossible with God? I love you guys and hope that encourages you. I hope it challenges you. I hope it spurs you on to believe that God can save what seems to us to be the unsavable. Hopefully you'll be able to join us this weekend, 9, 30, and 11 at the church as we continue our ongoing series called Unfinished, our ongoing mission. We'll be online at 11 as well. Hopefully you guys will be going out there and loving enough this week, and we'll see you on Sunday.